I felt um, anxious, so anxious that uh, I was burning. I couldn't sleep. I got tired and tired because I couldn't sleep because I was worrying and I was worry worry. I let my family down. Uh, everyone's going to suffer because I'm no good. Uh, everybody uh, who relied on me, it was a false reliance. I was a fake. Um, therefore. I worried even more about what financial disaster I put in my family. Um, so, anxiety, um, nervous energy burning off, lack of sleep. Uh, I remember vividly uh, curling up in a ball in the living room floor, howling, not even crying, howling. Seen how shit I was. Um, yeah, I felt so bad. That was that was that was all I could do. I just wanted to be taken away from home. I only realised something was wrong <laughs> when I was driving back from school crying and I knew this wasn't right. It was a build up of stress and work and expectations of work and then finding that I, I couldn't do it. Um, I wasn't alone, other people were struggling with it but I just thought I can't do this, I can't do this. Why, what's wrong with me, why can't I do it? I'm a failure. I knew I was stressed, I didn't know I was uh, depressed and I think it just got worse after that point, um, there, there was no stopping it. Once it started, the feelings of negativity about not being good enough, um, I couldn't stop it. The whole thing made me feel that I was worthless, so um, I didn't want to meet anyone. Uh, I didn't want to speak to anyone. I, I, I was so worthless, so there's no point in, I shouldn't be indulging my hobbies, <laughs> which I love, my cycling and my books, I couldn't do that. I couldn't, I couldn't see, and <laughs> now I can, <laughs> that these are the sort of things I should have kept doing. I should have kept in contact with you. I should have gone out on my bike. I should have gone to the cinema. I should have done this. I just had to hide because it was an embarrassment and I was a, a worthless human being. Um, and all the things that latterly I know was how you deal with it, I couldn't. It consumed me. Finding a way to kill myself that nobody would get hurt with. <laughs> I, if I 
I didn't want to jump in front of the train in case the train driver had to suffer so I didn't want to hang yourself in the forest because some kid might find you but I didn't want to kill myself but I did um, and it was not a drama thing it wasn't oh, attention oh, I want to kill myself it was I'm a useless piece of shit uh, I'm no good to anyone the whole everybody would be better off without me which didn't make sense now when I see it it doesn't make sense but I was so desperate I was so down I could understand why would people would do it and I was so numb feel that people in my position then would I could see how they could do it but unfortunately I knew I knew I couldn't because my family there's no way even though I was suffering and I was hating it and I was absolutely hating myself I would have never done that to my family actually been on the beach at King's Bands and thinking because I was away from you as all and I was having me time then I reflected what a great life I had this is brilliant I love my family and this is great I can do this guy who did a lot of things on his own and um, and I think when you're giving time to other people as your job you sometimes a wee bit of time yourself without being too selfish. But as soon as I got out there and in my stride, <laughs> not great running, but in my stride I could, the head would clear and then you could just enjoy the experience so you hear the birds, you listen to the sea crashing in you, you feel tactile the sand um, and the experience of being doing that sort of thing so I could enjoy the surroundings but yeah, at the start <laughs> oh, bang, rush, rush, rush because it was a bit time to one. and at the end, yeah, more relaxed I could come home and kill them with the rest of it. <laughs> I know that I've had these issues. I'm hopeful I won't have them again. I can't tell if I'm going to have them or not. I don't know what's going to kick in. You know, I didn't think I'd get it after the second time but then I went back in that position of responsibility and I had a trigger there and oh. I knew things were happening and I knew that I didn't want to be ill and I knew that I should be doing certain things and doing all these different techniques but I couldn't stop it that was also a frustrating thing that <laughs> To have this experience of two big episodes and then the third one to come again and know and be aware because I, I was aware of the triggers and stresses and because I couldn't get a grip with that, that made it worse. <laughs> and for the second and third episodes I got better at dealing with it and saying, well, I can't do anything about that, I'm ill. If I had a broken leg and I was in a plaster, it's obvious, but because I've got a broken head, it's not obvious to see that I'm ill. I think the last time I was ill was much quicker because <laughs> I eventually I did get a grip. I would 
don't really think I'm a better person for it. It was a good thing. It was a horrible thing, but it was a good thing. And that it made me reflect on what was important. My family was more important than anything else. What other people think doesn't matter, apart from the ones close to you. Um, so, and, and work is important. But hey, it's a job. And getting that balance right. And that's what was wrong. The boys, I don't know what they talked about, and I think they weren't fully aware of just how seriously ill it was, which is brilliant because we're too young to deal with that at the time. But that's good to talk about now.